Good evening and good day. Thank you for the opportunity to present our research here at IPCI. In this research, we take a look at instrument pulse estimation from X-ray images in temporal bone surgery. I3 POSNET specifically addresses temporal bone surgery, but can probably be extended to other CHI applications with little adaptations. In temporal bone surgery, like in many CHI applications, we are driving towards a minimally invasive approach. The temporal bone is part of the skull and how it sends of the equilibrium, the inner ear, the cochlea, and multiple vessels and nerves. In temporal bone surgery, we are interested to gain access to these organs, for example, to implant a cochlear implant or to perform tumor resection, such as vestibular schwannoma removal. The particular challenge for minimally invasive surgery here is that because of no line of sight, as well as the size and positioning of the previously mentioned risk structures, current methods really struggle to fulfill the submillimeter accuracy requirements. In this work, we developed a fluoroscopy-based solution to determine the pose of surgical instruments during the intervention. The basic setup here would be to implant several screws into the skull as fiducials, generate a CT of the intervention region only, and based on this, plan and perform the intervention. Traditionally, the pose of surgical instruments would have been determined by registration. That means the pose is determined by comparing the X-ray with the DRR generated on the fly. We would then use an optimization loop to iteratively find the pose and projection parameters maximize the agreement between X-ray and DRR. And this is also what we have done in our 2018 VABI work. However, this solution does not work for this problem because results do not meet clinical accuracy requirements. Also, registration is slow, in particular the generation of high fidelity DRRs. And additionally, a CT of the full head is needed. On the other hand, all newer and more accurate methods then need data and annotations, and lots of it. Which brings us to our first contribution, three datasets. With i3POSNET, we publish three datasets, each providing images and annotation in the form of projection parameters and the pose as seen on the image. These datasets cover the screw, as used as a fiducial, and two instruments, a robot prototype and a medical drill. Datasets A and B feature synthetic images with the real ground truth annotation, whereas datasets C includes images acquired from our in-house C arm and annotated with a custom tool manually. All these datasets come with predefined training, validation, and test splits to ensure comparability of evaluations. During the preparation of this work, we did not find similar open datasets. So we hope that these open datasets will contribute to the transfer and comparison of methods in the future. This, with that, we invite you to take a look and download the dataset from the project page. We included the link in the paper as well. Transitioning to the method now, we envision fluoroscopy guided tracking in three steps. First, a localization step. Second, a pose estimation step, and finally, the reprojection, where the pose is projected back to the patient coordinate system. Looking at these steps individually, in the localization step, we use the full resolution to generate a first pose estimate. Multiple learning based solutions are already published for this kind of task. Based on this initial pose estimate, we estimate the five-dimensional pose. We are ignoring rho here because of the rotational symmetry. Given the pose of both the instrument and the screw, we project them back into patient coordinates. The pose estimation step is the most promising to improve final tracking accuracy. Consequently, we define the ivory positive problem to be to predict the five-dimensional pose of the instrument or fiducial given an X-ray and an initial estimate. So, input, X-ray and initial estimate, output, five-dimensional pose. Here, the five-dimensional pose is defined with respect to the projection, which is 
relative to the projection geometry. The position is in the projection plane. The forward angle, here alpha, indicates the rotation in the projection plane. The projection angle, here tau, on the other hand, is the rotation out of the projection plane. I3 Bosnet then consists of three steps. First, we use the initial pose to crop a rotated patch around the instrument tip. The blue crosses show landmarks associated with the input pose in center. Both the patch rate, uh, rotation and an intensity normalization together force the resulting patch to feature less variation. Second, our convolutional neural network predicts the six landmarks on that patch. Yellow crosses are the prediction, green crosses the ground truth. Finally, we generate, we geometrically reconstruct the five-dimensional pose from the landmarks. We then repeat the process twice, each time initializing with the last estimate. Comparing the performance with registration, we see a five-fold performance increase. Our experiments show very good stability across independent training runs and different instruments. This is shown in the results of four datasets A and B. We achieve performance significantly below a pixel and submillimeter. However, the transfer to real X-ray images Dataset C is difficult. The performance seen here is despite no training on real images. One limitation of i 3 bosnet comes into play for large projection angles. Let's recall what we are evaluating here. The forward angle is the direction the instrument points. The projection angle is the rotation out of the projection plane. So if we increase the projection angle, the large projection angles, the forward angle becomes indiscernible, which is also what we see in our evaluations. Since this is expected behavior, we excluded cases of projection angle 80 or greater. We observed diminishing return for all error measures with increasing iteration count and leveling out at iteration 3, so that is why we chose three iterations. One interesting design decision was not to predict the angles directly, but predict landmarks instead. Here we compare prediction using landmarks with direct angle prediction. Larger errors in the initial estimate yield larger errors in the output. These observations are with respect to the forward angle alpha. If we look at the projection angle tau and compare, the trend of underestimation of the projection angles does not transfer from direct angles, direct angle prediction to landmark-based prediction. So using a landmarks is superior to direct prediction here. In summary, we present a deep learning-based instrument post-estimation method. With this method and for future comparison, we developed three datasets containing a synthetic and real X-ray real X-ray images. We focus on relative tracking accuracy and achieve sub-pixel accuracy. However, the method is limited to side wave wise projections and loses performance when transferred to real X-rays. In future work, we have already worked on improving the deep learning strategy, which is currently under review. I have added our Twitter handles. We will post news to this and other projects there. We are also working on the extension to multiple overlapping instruments. For additional details, and since we don't have the opportunity to meet at the poster due to COVID, we will be available in a Zoom room before and after events tomorrow. Please see our webpage for details. There you will also be find the, the links to the datasets and the code at GitHub. Thank you.